Hey guys, how's it going? Good morning. Let me go and set up this room real quick and then we can get started. 622, so we got about eight minutes to mark it open. Uh, just a reminder, there's heavy news this, this morning. So, um, I mean, I don't even know if I'm going to take any trades. I'll see how the market looks. If it's not too crazy, then maybe I'll take something. But for the most part, um, today is going to be a really heavy news day. So once I'm done setting up the room, we'll get this started. Today's the 1st of September. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right, cool. Let me get the Zoom link for you guys here in the premium. Looks like we're good. All right. All right, there we go with that. Let everybody into the room real quick as I continue updating this. Next one. All right, cool. 623. We got about seven minutes, guys. So good morning. Let me finish setting up the room real quick and then we can get started with our analysis of the US 30. Uh, looks good. All right, cool. It's going to let more people into the room right now. People are still on the way in. Get this link sent out as well. All right. Good. That's good. All right, I'm gonna let people more. I'm gonna let more people into the room. It's 6:24 right now. We got about six minutes till market open, so we do have some time. I mean, there's no crazy rush, but we should definitely start analyzing US 30 as soon as possible. So let me just finish posting this to uh, last group right there. I think that's it. All right, looks like we're good to go, guys. So let me go ahead and check out the uh, US 30 real quick. All right, cool. Morning, Clyde. Morning, Adrian. Morning, Miles. Morning, Abraham. Morning, Matt. Morning, Essa. Morning, Jeff. Morning, Van Hartwig. Morning, Maria. Morning, everybody. So hopefully you guys had a great trading day yesterday or for the week so far. I mean, this whole week we haven't had any losses, so it's been a great week so far. Uh, morning, CJ. I mean, pull up a US 30 real quick. Here, here on the uh, one hour, we have a uh, bearish bias. Reason for that is because price is below the pivots. Trend meter is currently uh, um, neutral right now. It's blue, but it might be shifting to the uh, the downside. Looking over here at the 10 minute, price is below the pivots. The trend meter is red. Looking over here on the three minute, price is below the pivots. Trend meter is also red. And lastly, here on the one minute, price is below the pivots and the trend meter is red. So looking at everything here, we have a bearish bias on the technical side. Looking over here at the fundamentals, let me just refresh this real quick. Um, it's currently bullish. So it's, you know, there isn't really one direction or the other right now. It's kind of mixed right now. Uh, we won't know until the market fully opens. Market opens at 630. So in about five minutes, we'll, we can determine what the fundamentals are looking like at that point. Looking over here at, at retail sentiment, it's currently 68% short. So I personally don't want to be shorting. I kind of want to buy. So We'll see what happens when the market opens. We still have a lot of time right now. It's only 626, so we do have some time uh, before it does swing to the upside. So that that's, I mean, that's pretty much what we'll be looking for. They're kind of opposite right now. The technicals are showing a sell. The fundamentals are showing a buy. And the retail sentiment is showing a sell. So they're kind of back and forth. I mean, there's no real direction that's been set yet. We'll see what happens when the market actually opens. Uh, the, fun, the, the fundamentals will probably just shift to the downside or the technicals will just have a big breakout to the upside. Like they'll shoot up, come right back down, retest the uh, London to low and then keep shooting up even higher. That's kind of what I possibly see, you know, happening, but we'll see what happens next. I think there was news this morning. Let me go here and check. We had, uh, let me refresh this. Today's Wednesday. We have uh, OPEC all day today. 
Uh, we also had USD ADP non-farm employment change. It was negative, so that's probably what caused it to drop. It dropped. Uh, negative news came out at 515. So looking over here, 515 actually, yeah. So this drop right here was actually based off that news. Um, probably when the market opens, they'll swing right back up because the news actually happened right over here at 515. All right, 515, which is right there. So 515 right here, as soon as that negative news came out, look what happened to price. It came all the way back down. So what's probably going to happen when the market opens is that it's going to correct back up or it'll just keep dropping based off the news. So we'll see what happens when the market opens. Um, you know, if the fundamental shift to a, to a sell, then we'll probably have a sell for the breakout. But um, personally, I would, I would like to, you know, if we take some scalps later, I personally would like to have a buy instead of a sell. But for the breakout, it's completely fine if it's a sell because we're only going to be in it for a few minutes or so. Uh, next news event is coming up at 645. We have final manufacturing uh, PMI. At 7 o'clock, we have ISM manufacturing PMI, which is high impact. Uh, at 730, we have crude oil, oil inventories. And then at nine o'clock today, we have Fed member Bostic speaking. So a ton of news this morning, uh, which will highly affect the market. So we're, we're probably going to be, you know, very conservative today with our trades. Um, you know, I might even take a half lot size for the breakout, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens from here. Hey, Javid, morning. Morning, Kenny. Morning, Bobby. Morning, Twister. Morning, everybody. So uh, market's opening in about two minutes. See what happens when market officially opens. I'll just have this pre set up just in case because, you know, we're probably going to be looking for a sell, but there's no guarantee that's going to happen yet. Uh, let me check the chat over here. Uh, let's see. Nice. Right, so morning, Peter. Morning, Rob. Morning, Patrick. Morning, Aaron. Morning, Dean. Morning, Taryn. Morning, Brian. Morning, David. Morning, Fahad. Morning, Jalan. Morning, Delmas. Morning, Justin. Morning, Paul. Morning, Emmanuel. Yeah, so uh, Jalan said that uh, JPN 225 went up 500 points. See, that's a lot for that specific asset because it's a slow moving asset. So if that's moving, you know, US 30 is definitely going to be moving as well. So market is opening in about, what was the timer at? In about 39 seconds. And morning, Gilbert. We'll see what happens when the market opens. Once the market opens, we'll confirm the uh, fundamental bias. If it swings to one direction, then we'll, we'll start trading that direction. However, if it doesn't, then we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait. So looking at this right here, in order for us to take a sell, we need a valid sell signal. It needs to be a strong bearish candle. Vice versa, if we're going to take a buy, it needs to close above here with a strong bear, uh, strong bullish candle. So let's give us some time right here. Morning, RJ. Morning, Randy. All right, market's opening in about three, two, one. There we go. Market is now open. Let's see how this moves right here. Uh, it looks like it might be coming down. That's coming down slightly. Let's open up the fundamentals over here. Fundamentals are currently bullish right now. They're bullish about 46 points. Not very much, but they are bullish. Uh, and it's kind of shifting around. What's, it's now only 16 points, so it's kind of... Uh, and it doesn't look like there's really a direction that's been set yet. So it looks like it's rejecting off this Asia low right here. But it does look bullish. I mean, if it's bullish, we're going to have to wait for it to swing up. I'm probably not going to take this trade if that becomes the case where it just ends up going back and forth. Uh, fresh this. It's only up nine points. So there's really no bias here on the fundamental side. It's kind of just going both ways. Um, if this closes with a strong uh, red candle, meaning it closes with the red sell signal with little to no wick on the bottom side right here, then technically it could be a, 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 you know, a valid sell. But because the fundamentals don't have a direction, it's going to be a bit risky. So we'll see what happens here. It's not really moving. It kind of came down, then it came right back up, but it didn't close with a uh, with a signal. This candle right here has about 40 seconds. Hopefully by 40 seconds, we'll have some clarity as to like the direction of uh, fundamentals over here. It's currently going back and forth. You can see it went from negative eight to positive three. It hasn't really you know chosen its direction just yet, which is unusual because usually when market opens, it's usually like at least 50 points, 50 to 100 points in one direction or the other. Um, obviously you can see right here, there just is no direction that's been set. We do know that retail sentiment is short, so we'll see if that plays any part in here. Um, let me see. I'm debating if I want to take a half lot size for this or not, or a full lot size, but. All right, so this is about to close right here for a sell. 
No, actually, no. The wick on the bottom is just too low. I mean, it, it's it's like this is an iffy trade. Like it looks like it could be okay, but then it also looks iffy. I don't know if you guys can see right here. Generally, we want little to no wick on the bottom side. The wick on the bottom side isn't huge, but I mean, it's still there, right? So what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to place this here because this technically could have been the entry for the breakout, but I'm not really going to take it myself. Uh, if I do take it, I'm probably going to take it halfway or I'm going to wait for a better entry. But technically right here, this looks like this could possibly be the, um, the breakout. But like I mentioned, today's a very risky day to be trading because of all of the news. So I'm, I don't think I'm going to enter right away. I'm going to follow the fundamentals over here, make sure that it stays red. And then I want to confirm that it, um, you know, it drops, it drops X amount. It's right here. And if I enter it later, I might just enter it for half, you know, half the, half of the move. And I, I'm not going to go for the full move, but I'm currently not in the position. And I do, I advise you guys that this is going to be a very, very risky trade. So I'm not going to hop in just yet. I need a better confirming candle. Also right here, if it rejects off this point and confirms a drop, then like if we have a strong red candle right here, then I'll probably take it. It's rejecting off the HLO right there. But also, you know, like I mentioned, we need a strong red candle. I also need the fundamentals over here to confirm it. It's not really going one direction or the other. It's still at negative six. On open, it's usually when there's the highest volatility. So there should be a bigger push. Um, it should be at least like in the 50, you know, negative 50 or positive 50 range. And this is why I don't want to take it because it's going to pull back a bit. see yeah quentin said yeah it looks like john wick not exactly i agree it uh it just doesn't look good right now it's not as smooth as as we like as we like when we take the uh hey guys i think someone over here is drawing on the screen uh if you guys are drawing on the screen just stop drawing on the screen i might keep clearing this up all right all right cool so just looking at this right here you can see it's rejecting off that asia low um Antoine, it looks like you keep drawing on the screen. Let me uh, delete this again. Uh, Kyle said manufacturing PMI affect the market. Yeah, definitely it does. So that, uh, cause the manufacturing is gonna, you know, it's gonna have to, it takes a big toll in like the comp manufacturing companies that we have here on the index, which is gonna be, you know, it'll affect all the retail companies. Like it'll affect Caterpillar, it'll affect, um, was like Verizon, Nike, Disney, Home Depot, you know, the, the companies that sell stuff, retail companies, it's going to affect those companies. So um, that's another reason why I don't want to take a trade because there, there was a manufacturing PMI, final manufacturing PMI that's coming up in about 10 minutes. Uh, there's, there's just a lot of stuff here that's affecting the market. One of the main things is the OPEC meeting. This is all day. So this has been going on, I think, since London Open. And it's just going to keep going on all day. So this is going to be, it's going to have an on and off effect throughout the market. And that's, that's probably what's causing a lot of this low volatility in the market. The, the reason why there's a lot of low volatility is because a lot of people in the same position as us, they noticed that there's a lot of news this morning. So they're being careful. They're not really trading because this volatility right now is just way too slow uh, for market open. It's 635 right now. So we're, we're done looking for the breakout. I'm going to turn on my alerts here and we can start looking for possible scalps if, um, you know, if available. But I, I can't really say if there's going to be um, if there's going to be a uh, entry or not because there's a lot of news this morning. But I'll keep following along. So let's see. Delete this. Got my alerts on right here. All right, and here we go as it starts to come down further. So I'm still willing to take this for a, for a late entry, but in order for me to take that late entry, I need to confirm that, um, that we have a fundamental bias here. Because the thing is, I don't want to trade for a sell when the you know, retail sentiment is super short right now. It's only 65%, but it's kind of just going back and forth. There's no direction that's really been said here. Uh, Anton said that there is a odd cat almost hit CP. Let's check. Okay, cool. So our odd cat position that I called last night uh, almost hit TP. It hit TP2 already. It's about to hit full TP right here um, with little to no drawdown. Pretty nice uh, position if you guys took it last night. I called this trade. Um, what did I call it? I called it last night at about 6.09 p.m. So we've been holding on to this position for about 12 hours now, but it's, you know, it's going straight to TP. So it's looking good. Uh, going back to 
US 30 over here, there's still no entry. Uh, this is fine if it swings up, because if it swings up, it's just going to provide for a, for a sell entry here. Let's see, we got news coming up in about seven minutes. So we'll see what happens from there. If this closes with a strong bearish candle, I'm probably just going to hop in, maybe with a half lot size for a, for a late entry. We got about 30 seconds left on here. I'll put the requirements for the strategy here at the K2 US 30, uh, one minute. Pivot scalp strategy one confirm. Confirm valid K2 momentum signal 2A or two. Uh, confirm price is below K2 pivots three four for sell or above four or buy. Three enter on the open of the following candle. And lastly, TP stop loss. So this is basically what we're looking for right now in the one minute, right here specifically. So right here, we do have the opposite signal. If it does come back below and close with the sell signal, then a possible sell. So same thing for the three minute over here. Let me save that for this over here as well. It's just the uh, TP stop loss changes. It's going to be 250 to 500. <clears throat> All right, so that's good right there. Let me see if there's any snipes available. Maybe there's something that we could have taken over here. All right, that right there. All right. There, there's actually one up here off the sell signal. There's actually a couple here that played out pretty nice. I don't know if anyone caught these trades last night, but there was a couple nice scalps right here. Um, turn this off. Go back to the one minute. Still nothing there. This is going to be the K2 US 30 uh, 10 minute snipe strategy. So, first, Confirm wick rejection off any K2 pivot to confirm wick rejection off K2 SR zone. Three, confirm wick rejection off K2 pivot does not touch candle body. And four, confirm direction of momentum. using K2 momentum indicator. After that, enter on the open of following candle. And six, uh, fixed TP stop loss, 500 pips. All right, so there are a couple entries here that were available. I mean, obviously you guys can see right here, there was uh, one right here, wick rejection off the pivot and structure. Obviously this would have been a full TP right there. Straight to prop target. So that would have been a win. There's also another entry that was available. I think that was it actually. This one didn't touch the pivot, so no entry available there. So this is something that we'll be looking for on the 10 minute. Um, so one, one strategy here on the 10 minute, one strategy here on the three minute, and then last thing, another strategy here on the one minute. So if we get a one a sell signal here, then I'll possibly take it. But like I mentioned, it's gonna be kind of risky because of the uh, because of the news. First of all, because of the news also, because the retail sentiment is also short. Uh, looking over here at the fundamentals, fundamentals still haven't chosen a direction. You can see it hasn't really pushed one way or the other, right? It goes from like negative three to positive three. Uh, generally, if the, during this time when volatility is highest, it's usually like negative 100, negative 200, or positive 100, positive 200. Um, looking over here at the stock index, it's pretty much right down the middle, right? There's no real like direction. You can see Apple is up about three points. Salesforce is up two points. Microsoft is up two points. Boeing's up 1.5. Walt Disney's up 1.2. Um, looking down here on the opposite end, United Health is negative three. Caterpillar is negative 2.4. 3M is down 1.5. Um, Traveler is down one. But for the most part, it's more, it's more so uh, green than, than red right now. So uh, with that said, there's really no fundamental bias right now. It's kind of just going down the middle. 
Obviously, you can see right here the number starting to increase a little bit. There you go. It's just starting to drop right here. I'm tempted to get in for a, a late entry and just ride ride it down. Um, but I'm not going to take it yet. I'm gonna I'm I'm done looking for the the um for the uh the breakout right because it's way past six thirty five. I'm now looking for a possible entry here. So in order for me to take this sell entry, I need to confirm a valid K2 momentum signal. And I also need to confirm that price is below the pivots, which it is right here. Uh, looking at this right here, if I was to move this up slightly, this technically would have been a full TP off this, uh, this one minute entry if we were to follow that right there. Uh, however, I'm looking for another entry to appear for me to hop in for a late in, for a, a second entry, basically. Uh, let's see, we got about 13 seconds left on this candle. Um, no position. In order for us to take this position, we need a valid sell signal here, which didn't appear. So no entry available there. And the volatility this morning is really low. So let's see market open right here at 630 from um, oh, this candle right here. So for market open, price has only moved about like 500 pips. Generally, it's probably moved like about a thousand pips or so or something closer to that, but it hasn't really moved very much. It's kind of just going back and forth. So no entry here. Reason for that is we don't have the first requirement. We need a valid K2 momentum signal. And we also have news coming in two minutes. Thanks a lot for, uh, for reminding me. So we're going to wait for the news to pass. Hey, Smokes Morning. Um, yeah, we're going to wait for the news to pass because we have... Um, we have a final manufacturing PMI in about two minutes. Um, obviously, it's going to affect the market. And but this is going to be the main one. The ISM manufacturing PMI is going to be at seven. So in about 15 more minutes, we have another news event coming up. And this is why it's important that you guys don't just hop into the trade without waiting for that confirmation, right? Because if you guys hop into the trade down here and didn't wait for that first signal, the, the valid signal, you would have been in some drawdown right now because it came all the way back up about 300 pips. So guys, it's really important that you guys are patient. You guys wait for the actual entry because if you guys just hop in and not really think about it, um, you can get caught in some, some pretty nasty drawdown. Uh, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So er, there's nothing on the 10 minute. There's nothing on the three minute. The only uh, time frame we could possibly have something would be here on the one minute. So that's all I'm just going to stick on the one minute for now. Uh, but we do, yeah, we do have news coming up in about two minutes or one minute actually. Let me scroll up real quick. Uh, let's see. Rick said it's probably the scammer doing his own Zoom for his group. <laughs> right, right, Rick. Exactly. And it, it's it's it blows my mind, guys, how we have like that scammer in the in the premium. Like that dude pays for K two, but he still scams. If he would just trade, he wouldn't have to scam. Uh, but, you know, some people are just dumb. Anyways, odd cat just hit full TP, thirty five pips right there. Congrats to whoever caught it. Um, yeah, it was nice. No, like literally no drawdown at all. Straight to TP. Let me give you guys an update in the group over here. Delete this because we already hit our full TP. There we go. So there we go, guys. Full TP off the uh, odd CAD position. Pretty solid right there. It looks like Larkin took uh, the odd cat right there. He's up 5,950. Great work, Larkin. Uh, Kip over here as well. Kip is up 6,740 for the morning. Great work, Kip. So yeah, two people right there with some pretty big profits this morning. Um, see if there's anything else available over here. Nothing yet. All right, so grateful TP off that odd cat. Um, News just came out right now. Let's see how the news was. Uh, news was, let's see. It was about neutral. So not much off that news event right there. The next big one that's coming up is, um, is at seven. It's supposed to be negative. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah. So it was previously 59.5. They're forecasting it to be 58.5. It's not supposed to be very negative, but it's supposed to be negative like in general. So we'll see what happens. If that becomes the case, it might be helping uh, this possible sell position here if, uh, if we do get that sell signal. Let's see what else we got over here. Uh, yeah, Charlie said short drop from 65 or 67 to 65 percent. So it looks like a lot of people are pulling out of the market because um, the thing is they're not getting stopped out, right? Obviously, uh, well, maybe they are because right here, if they entered a sell at the wrong time right here, but it's not really that far. Unless your stop loss is super tight, they would have gone stopped out. But for the most part, uh, from my perspective, I, I could see people just pulling out of the position. So they're switching from um, from shorts to longs which is, is better for us because we're looking for some cells here. So if we still get, if we get this, okay, there's one uh, pending signal right there. I'm going to wait for this to close. If it closes, we can take this for a possible sell. I have to set this up differently over here. Uh, no signal there. So we got to wait for the next one. So it's still coming down right there, but we don't have the confirmation yet. Once we get the confirmation, we can hop in for the uh, for the sell. But the news is coming up in about 12 minutes, so it's going to be really risky for us to hop into this trade anyways. So we just got to give us some time. Check out the fundamentals real quick. Fundamentals are still not one direction or the other. It's right down the middle still, nine pips, not really much at all. Um, looking over here at the stock index. Yeah, I mean, they're just right down the middle. Everything kind of just balances each other out. So Caterpillar is down three points. Salesforce is down three points. Uh, United Health is down almost three points. Microsoft is almost up three points. Apple is up 2.6. Goldman Sachs is down 1.8. 3M is down 1.4. Uh, Walt Disney is down is up 1.2. Procter & Gamble is up one. And Visa is up one. While um, Walgreens, Travelers, IBM, Dow Inc., they're all down right now. So let me check the rest of the indexes as well. The rest of the index is over here. Uh, it, it's like yesterday. It's kind of weird how like price has been moving. The uh, the Dow Jones is the only one that's in the red right now. S and P is up. Nasdaq is up. Russell two K is up. VIX is also down. But for the most part, um, I mean they're not very strong either. Like the S and P is only up eight points. Nasdaq is up ninety one points. Uh, Dow Jones is down fifteen points. So obviously you guys can see how price is moving. Our price is just going sideways. And the reason for that is because a lot of people are probably just not trading today. And the reason why a lot of people aren't trading is because today's a heavy news day. Just like I mentioned earlier, uh, there's OPEC meetings all day. These are, you know, oil-based meetings. Uh, we have non-farm employment change that came out at 5.15. It was negative. Uh, we also have ISM manufacturing PMI at seven o'clock, which is in about 11 minutes. So we have that and you know people probably just saw this news this morning and they're like oh, i'm just not going to trade today because there's so much news um and that's why the volatility is just extremely low so we'll see what happens if we don't have a trade then we don't have a trade guys like it's, sometimes it's better not to trade than to uh, take something risky 650 right now we got about 10 minutes the market reaches the next news event Uh, let's see. Rick said the real breakout will probably happen right after the news, you think? Yeah, it's going to have a late reaction. The problem why there's no reaction is because people just aren't trading right now. That's why the volatility is super low. Generally, when the market opens, you see it go back and forth, right? You'll see it go down, you'll see it go up, you'll see it go directional. After that, it'll either continue up or it'll come straight back down. But today, there just hasn't been any move at all. There hasn't even been a 500 pip move here um, enough to, you know, e even stop someone out if they're in this cell. They're just back to where they began. From when the market opened so yeah i mean it's it should be moving uh, after the news event it's probably um i what i kind of think is going to happen here or what i feel is going to happen here is people are going to wait for all the news events to pass and then they're going to start trading so they're going to wait until the ism manufacturing pmi comes out and then possibly crude oil inventories and then maybe they might start you know volatility pick up as we get closer to fed member bostic but um currently right now you can see like if i just was just to draw this right here and this right here. And if I was to delete this, you can see it's just ranging sideways right now, right? There's like literally no movement. So just something to keep in mind. Sometimes people don't understand that or they don't notice that that price is just consolidating. It's kind of just, uh, it's squeezing right now. It looks like it's charging up for a breakout. So this looks like a little squeeze. 
I forgot what people call this. They call it like an inverted, like some sort of triangle, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the names are. I don't trade patterns at all. So it's like basically just, it, I call it a squeeze because it, oh, there, there's a one minute scalp right there. Fuck, I just missed it. There's a one minute, um, one minute scalp right here if anyone wants to take it. Let's see. It's a risky trade, but if, I mean, if anyone wants to take it, feel free. There's news coming up in about eight minutes though. So I'm probably gonna pull out really soon. All right, there we go, full TP. So whoever caught that one minute scalp right there is full TP pretty quick. Um, I'll send you guys my profits. There you go, full TP. <clears throat> so, whoever caught that one minute. so you guys gotta be quick. This is why it's important that you guys understand the strategy or you guys are gonna miss these moves here. So that scalp right there, just hit full TP. Let me just clean this up a little bit. So I can send you guys a little update. All right, that was nice, <laughs> quick. So I, I kind of hate when I don't take a trade a day. So there's my one trade for the day and a hit full TP. So definitely great work, great work there for whoever caught it with me. Looks like some of you guys did. Uh, a lot of you guys are sending profits. So if you guys want to send in profits, go ahead and send them in, and then um, I'll add them to the list. And I'll also send in my profits as well. Today's not the day to get greedy, guys. If you guys make profit, you know, take your profit run. Let me give you guys a full T. Uh, let me guys take a screenshot of that. All right, looks good. <laughs> I'm not gonna post my uh, my personal account. That thing was so small, it's like nothing. Uh, yeah, looking over here, here's my first account, and my other account over here. All right, so I'm almost up like about a thousand for the day. Um, I took a couple other trades, like smaller trades, but uh, they added up pretty nicely. All right, so I just took that one minute trade. That's pretty much all that I took today. I didn't take a breakout like I mentioned before. It's just too risky. Um, but here are my profits for the day. I'm up about 879 on this account and then 879 on this account as well. So uh, this is my first account. You can see it's green right here because it hit, I let it hit CP. This one over here is my copier. It doesn't have the green right there. So it's a, diff it's a totally different account. Um, but both of them combined right here. So I made about 87, 8, 879, 23 times two. A total of 1,758 this morning off just that one or that trade in another trade I took earlier. So not bad. If, if I have to close out the day with just 1,758 in profit, no, I'm happy with that. Uh, but we'll try to catch some more trades if possible as we uh, continue on. There is news coming up in about six minutes, though, so just keep that in mind. Let's see. All right, cool. So I'll send this in over here. Let's see what else, everyone else locked in. Jamie over here locked in a total of 351. Great work, Jamie. Uh, looking over here at Andy. Andy locked in a total of 1,124 for the day. Great work, Andy. Kevin Lim over here locked in a total of 2,822. Nice work, Kevin. Uh, Owen over here locked in a total of 327. So as you can see, I'm not the only one that profited off that trade, right? There's a lot of people here who locked in profit. Kyle locked in 117. Nice work, Kyle. Um, let me see, Tuan over here. Yeah, Tuan's up 100K, 177,000 for the month. That's crazy, bro. I've been taking some bigger trades though. So killing it, man. All right, let's see what else. His other account here for that odd caddy took, he locked in a total of 525. Nice work, Tuan. So Tuan's been hitting it both ways. He uh, He's like me, he trades two different accounts, one for uh, Forex, one for US 30. So for right here, he locked in that much. His other account over here locked in a lot more as well. Um, let me go over here to the other chat. William over here locked in 16,000 for the day. Nice work, William. Kip over here is up 8,325. Nice work, Kip. I'm going to be looking for another possible entry right here as well. Another possible scout. Let me see if I could probably get into this. Yeah, this thing's moving kind of heavy. I don't really like moving when it moves that heavy because it's usually due for some sort of retracement. 
Uh, so we got about 10 seconds left on here. If you guys want to take this, this is going to be a risky trade. I'm going to try to take it maybe with a smaller lot size possibly. Oh, no, it didn't even close. So there's no entry there. Reason for that is because there's no sell signal that closed right there. We needed to close in order for it to be valid. It's the first requirement right there. No sell signal, so no entry. All right, going back to the profits over here, Charlie over here locked in a total of 122. Nice work, Charlie. Yeah, so entry day is up 16,000. Uh, Kip's up 8,325. Uh, Charlie's up about 122. Uh, Angela's up 250. Nice work, Angela. I'm tempted to just hop in and finish the move here because it looks like it's going to hit the full DP off the breakout from this morning. Tim locked in 102. Great work, Tim. Scott locked in a total of nine, uh, 295. Great work, Scott. Fidel locked in a total of 577. Nice work, Fidel. Terrence locked in a total of 1,050. Great work, Terrence. Uh, Stanley over here locked in a total of 1,578. Nice work, Stanley. You guys are killing it, guys. Everyone's doing amazing today. I'm going to go and set up an alert right here for the breakout just so we can follow it. Um, no entry there for the one minute. TP. So the breakout right here, if anyone took the breakout uh, earlier, it already hit TP1. This red line right here was TP1 for 250 pips. So I'll just give a small little update for whoever caught that. Um, obviously, it looks like it's going to hit full TP here, but I'm not just going to hop in for that last little push. It's just too risky for such a small uh, profit potential there. Uh, let's see. So I'm not in this position, but I know a lot of you guys did take it. So I'm just gonna give you guys a little update there. And if it hits full TP, I'll give you guys the update for that as well. So let's see, Dell over here locked in a total of 264. Great work, Dell. Tori over here locked in a total of 282. Nice work, Tori. Uh, and uh, Stanley over here locked in a total of 1,578. So great work amongst everyone here. Um, you guys are pretty much on point. S over here too, locked in a total of 621. Nice work, Essa. All right, let me just uh, send this over to the other groups over here, just so that everyone's kind of up to date with like how everything's moving. Um, so over here, uh, Maddie over here locked in a total of 771. Nice work, Maddie. <laughs> he said, yeah, accidental loss here for Maddie, but he made it right back, made about 771. He would have been up like 800, but he's up uh, 771 right now. So definitely great work right there, Maddie. Let me see what else we got over here. Casey over here locked in the total of 509. Nice work, Casey. Small lot size, but he still made some pretty, or no, a normal lot size. Uh, Tiana over here locked in a total of 206. Nice work, Tiana. So yeah, you guys are all doing pretty good so far. Um, this is the reason why I didn't take the sell at the bottom, right? Because this is how you get trapped. You get trapped because they, they put that little, you know, bag of profit in front of you right here where you think it's going to hit full TP. And then when you least expect it, it just retraces back up and you're going to be all upset, right? You're like, damn, I should have just waited for an actual entry there. So that's the reason why I didn't take the trade. Um, you know, if you guys are listening to me, like every time I say something specific, I say something, I, every time I say something, guys, it's for a specific reason. I'm not just saying, oh, don't take it for no reason. I'm saying not to take it because I've seen these traps play out so many times um, over the years, you know, because I've been trading US 30 every morning for the past three years. I see these same patterns just repeat itself. I see that I saw the trap come right here when I saw the big wick and I, had, I figured it was going to retrace back up. So in order for me to take this trade, I need to get a valid entry. I need a valid K2 momentum signal, and then I'll hop in using this strategy here. Other than that, let me see if there's anything else here. There's nothing here on the three minute. Uh, the reason for that is because we need a retracement here. We need a retracement to the upside, and then we catch it as it swings right back down. Um, other than that, hey, why is this right here? Yeah. Let's fix this real quick. Oh, it's wrong. Is that the wrong number? All right, there we go. So yeah, for the three minute, we need a retracement right here and then the sell signal, there's no retracement yet. So there's probably not gonna be an entry anytime soon. Uh, here for the 10 minute, the pivots are way up here. So there's probably not gonna be an entry on the 10 minute anytime soon. Uh, lastly, here on the one minute, we'll be waiting for a possible entry there. Let me check out the news because the news just came out. Uh, refresh this. Wednesday, let's see, we have, uh, let's see, it's loading. Still no update.
Oh yeah, definitely King King Kong. Uh, yeah, Kong said odd cat odd cat hit full TP. Yeah, no, definitely that was that was a good uh, full TP there. A hey, smokes morning. Uh, Gilbert said, where do you check the news whether it's good or bad? Uh, Gilbert, I usually use uh, Forex Factory. So you go to forexfactory.com, click on calendar right here, and then you can see all the news for the day. If it's good, it's green. If it's bad, it's red. So that's how you can figure it out. Looks like the ISM manufacturing PMI was actually positive. It wasn't a, it wasn't a huge push to the upside, but it was definitely positive because they were expecting it to be short uh, by one point. It was actually positive by about half a point. So the news right now is, was good. The next news event coming up is at 7.30 for the crude oil inventories. Um, so in between now and 7.30, there's going to be another um, medium impact news that's coming up shortly. So other than that, I don't know if I'm going to be taking any more trades. If I see something good, I'll take it. If I don't, then I'm probably just going to hold off. Uh, is US 30 frozen? Let me refresh this. Uh, it is frozen. Let me check my MT4. It's still moving on my MT4. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with this here. Yeah, US 30 on, on trading view is frozen. I'm looking at my MT4, it's still moving though. It's currently moving up like slightly. All right, so that might be my cue to get offline. <laughs> Sometimes guys like, if you guys have been following me for a while, there's like some days where the market will just freeze like this. Oh no, it's back open. So right here it's back open. I see the timer. When the market freezes like this, this is usually a hint that like something crazy is gonna happen in the market. Like there's gonna be some sort of a market manipulation. And if you guys have been around for a while, you guys have seen it yourself. Like you guys seen it when you traded. It, a lot of this stuff usually happened around uh, COVID. Um, and the reason for that is because there's a lot of news going on today. So sometimes there's slippage in the market with regard to you know market data and with that happening it's you know it's just it's all bad i mean i'm looking at mt4 now it's not even moving very much it's still moving but it's barely moving by like micro pips so if that becomes the case and, and trading view here doesn't update then we'll probably just have to call it a session a early today i mean we did make our profit for the day already so i'm not really um like i don't really have a, a incentive to keep trading especially if the market's not really showing the, uh... that's weird. I'm looking at MT4, it's barely moving, but it's still moving. Here on trading view, it's not moving at all. Okay, let me check out the market data. See US 30, you will check out Wanda. So Wanda's still moving, but you can see right here, it's barely moving at all. It's not really moving too much. It's like barely, if anything at all. Um... Fresh this right here. Yeah, it's weird. Just this data right here is empty. But even if we were on like on, it's still barely moving. Like to the point where it's not even worth trading. Um, okay, let me check the chat to see if there's any questions here. But obviously, there's no entries that are coming up over here. Let me see if there's any profits that you guys locked in uh, after the last time I checked. Let's see, Casey locked in a total of 509. Nice work, Casey. Uh, looking over here, Kyle locked in a total of 362, no losses. Nice work, Kyle. Uh, and Tuan over here locked in a total of 109. That's crazy, bro. So you took some, some crazy uh, profits right there off that. Uh, let me see over here. New levels over here locked in a total of 2,761. Nice work, new levels. Let's see what else we got over here. Sisuk locked in a total of 1,499. Great work, Sisuk. No losses, straight wins. Same with new levels, no losses, straight wins. Uh, Csuk's other count locked in 2,098. Nice work, Csuk. Uh, and Kevin Lim over here locked in a total of 3,220. Uh, small accidental loss looks like up here, but everything else straight wins. And this is crazy because Kevin's doing this with small lot sizes. He's doing it with one lot and between one and three lot. So compared to my 10 lot, if he was taking a 10 lot, he'd be uh, maybe close to like 30,000 right now uh, if that was the case. So definitely great work there, Kevin. Uh, Nick Law over here. I uh, had a couple losses, but wins over here to cover it. So small losses right here, and then a big uh, big wins over here to cover it. So definitely great work there too, Nikla. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I'm missing over here. You, you guys can see the gap right here, right? I hate when there's a gap in the market because this usually indicates that the market's about to do something weird. Because um, it doesn't happen too often. Usually if there's a, if there's a break in market data, 
there's usually some sort of slippage that's going on behind the scenes that's uh, that's probably going to affect the market um, as we move forward. And I wouldn't be surprised because we do have uh, Fed member Bostic. So when the Fed speaks, they speak directly on the U.S. economy. So at nine o'clock, that's usually where you'll see the market start to move kind of funky from like nine to nine to twelve because he's probably going to talk for about one to three hours, depending if he uh, switches mic over to another person. Otherwise, we have uh, crude oil inventories at 730, which is in about 23 minutes. So, I mean, there's a lot of news today, guys. So I don't think I'm going to be trading anymore for the rest of the day. And the reason for that is because I don't want to get caught in any fake outs. Like, I don't want to get caught taking a sell. And then as soon as I hop into that sell, it just reverses on me because the news here, you know, might be positive. So um, just keep that in mind. If you guys have questions, you know, just put your questions in the chat. Otherwise, let me go down the chat, uh, the Zoom, and see what I, uh, I missed over here. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling down. Yeah, Charlie said it's 64% short now. So let me just go and update this real quick. Damn, it's it's a lot less less now. It's 59%. So it looks like a lot of people are just pulling out of the market, right? I don't see people getting stopped out because it hasn't really pushed up heavy, like high enough. So as you can see right here, it was at 70%. Now it's at 59%. Reason for that's because a lot of people are just pulling out of the market. I think everyone here is is thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. They're indicating that there's a lot of news coming up shortly. So a lot of people are just getting scared and pulling out of the market. So currently right now, there's only 59% of people who are short, which is fine because if we're taking sales, that's going to work in our favor. However, um, you know, there's a lot of hints here that are telling you, you know, the market's probably going to move a little crazy in the next couple hours. So you can see the retail share is pulled out of the market. Also, market volatility is really low. It's barely pushing to sideways. This is the one minute. So if you go on the uh, three minute or 10 minute, you can see it hasn't even moved at all, right? It's just barely moving. Um, also looking at the fundamentals over here, let me refresh this. It's down 30 points right now, down 35 points. So a sell does look kind of nice right now if you do find a decent sell, but I, I don't, you know, I'm not sure if we're really going to find one um, anytime soon. If I find another trade within the next 10 minutes or so, then maybe I'll take it. Otherwise, I'm probably going to call it a day. Once it hits 730, I'm just going to call it a day because, um, you know, the market here is just not really moving at all. It's, it's literally barely moving. It's going to be hard to catch any, you know, good positions here. So other than that, let's see. Guys, so I changed my name here on Telegram uh, because I'm never going to message you guys first, right? There's always these scammers who, who just keep uh, messaging people. Like I'll never ask you guys for Bitcoin. I'll never send you guys to a different website other than the K2 website. But here's another person here. Sean K2, obviously a fake uh, account, uh, trying to get uh, Tim over here. Joshua over here locked in a total of 197. Nice work, Joshua. And his other account locked in 445. Great work, Joshua. That's profits. All right, so other than that, let me see if there's anything else that I'm, um, I'm missing. Let me go down the Zoom, see if I missed anything here. Uh, Ravs was asking if I'm doing a full lot size. Yeah, I did a full lot size today. Uh, Jalan said, anyone's earnings coming up today? They wait for people to stack up trades. Um, not that I know, Jalan. I, I don't think there's anything to because today's the first of the month. It's September 1st. So I don't think there's any earnings that are being sent out uh, today specifically, or none that I know about, at least. Uh, nice. Yeah, Dean said, I caught it on a small lot, but a win is a win. Definitely. You know, win's a win. Uh, and Paul said, you know, not bad considering market conditions because the market's not even moving. It's kind of just going sideways. Uh, yeah, Abraham locked in some profit there too. Stanley said another signal coming, news in two minutes. Um, all right, Dean. Dean said, uh, oh man, if you took the breakout when entry was at discount, sheesh. Yeah, because this would have been a nice drop right here if you caught it from up here, rejecting off the pivot. That would have been a nice little profit from up there, way down here about yeah, 800 pips, 900 pips almost. That would have been nice, hi, Dean. All right, so no, no entry here yet off the one minute. Let me check the three minute. Still nothing there either. I'll keep going back between the three minute and one minute to see if there's any entries, but it is getting closer to 7.30 as it gets closer to that time, uh, or 7.20 actually. If I don't see a trade within the next nine minutes, I'm not going to take a trade because we do have medium impact news coming up at 7.30, which is the crude oil inventories. Um, they're, they're anticipating it to be positive news. So if that's the case, it's going to be bad news if you guys take a buy. Let me check this real quick, see what else I'm missing. Yeah, Kip said, fun morning, but I'm looking forward to the end of NFP week so we can get those strong breakouts. I'm going to go save lives, stamp out disease, and 
be the pillar of this fun community. See you, see you tomorrow. Yeah. So Kip, I'll see you tomorrow. Kip's a, he's a cancer doctor here at, in K2. So he's going to go do his cancer work uh, and save up, save these patients while, um, while we continue to watch these charts here. So other than that, guys, I don't think there's going to be any entries available. We'll keep following it. Uh, this breakout right here might be nice. So it looks like it might finally hit full TP. If we get that sell signal right there, maybe we can try to catch the lot, like the little last move of it. But I, I, I definitely don't want to be trading when it's too close to there. You go full TP off the breakout for uh, whoever caught that. I didn't catch myself, but I'll just give you guys an update for whoever did catch it because that was definitely a really nice move right there. Damn, that was a, that was a solid. So I, I marked this up from the beginning. I said I wasn't going to take it. Um, I probably should have just taken it when it came down here with a better confirmation because when I got this confirmation over here with a strong red candle, I should have just hopped in. But it's all good. It is what it is, but I'm glad that um, some of you guys did catch that that break out there. So let me just get a screenshot here. I'll give you guys an update in the uh, in the group. Yeah, that was solid. All right, let me give you guys a little update there. All right, looks good. Um, cool. Yeah, Maddie said had to end the day with at least a band. So Maddie over here locked on a total of 1,226. Nice work, Maddie. Yeah, you killed it, bro. On point. So Maddie locked in about well over a thousand right there. Uh, looking over here, Dre said he took his first uh, ever trade, locked in a total of uh, 277. Great work, Dre. You know, it's just the beginning, bro. Uh, just keep locking in more wins, and soon enough, you're going to be passing your FTMO, just like everyone else here. Uh, Angela over here locked in a total of about a little over a thousand. So definitely great work right there. Angela, when she saw the uh, volatility on Forex, she hopped in for a GJ trade. So definitely great work right there. Uh, other than that, let me see if there's any other questions. Scroll down real quick. Um, Charlie said, can you go over the breakout strategy? Yeah, sure, Charlie, I'll go over that right now. So let me just hide this over here and I'll show you guys exactly what I was looking for. All right, so. Let me, um, no, let's rewind this to here so that I can show you exactly what we were looking for. So this is going to be the, uh, K2 US 30 breakout strategy. So for one, you want to confirm the technical bias on the, uh, 10 minute. <clears throat> three minute, one minute, one hour optional. To confirm the, uh, see, confirm the fundamental bias. So for, for this, you need to make sure that the Dow Jones um, positive, DJ average positive or negative. Uh, and this is kind of hard for me to go over, like, because the news are, it's like we're late into the session. So, like, if you guys ever want me to cover the breakout, just ask me to be in the session so I can be a little more detailed to put out the requirements. But I'll try to explain it as much as I can here uh, because we can't check the fundamentals because the fundamentals are different from market open until now. But we can kind of have an idea if you guys have been sitting in on the session. So, for this, you uh, curly negative, positive 100. Uh, three, and I think that's about it. Uh, optional trade opposite uh, retail sentiment. I mean, everything here that I put that is optional. I, I use it as actual requirements. So you guys can use it if you want, you guys don't have to, but that's, you know, obviously it's going to be a, a better, uh, better uh, likeliness of you guys hitting a win. So confirm uh, recent K2 momentum signal in direction of entry and last you confirm strong candle in direction of entry little to no wick just little to no wick that's 
to my keyboard. All right, so that's about it. <clears throat> Insert on the open. Of the following candle, and then after that, fix TP stop loss 500 pips. So this is pretty much the breakout right here, guys. So basically, let me show you guys exactly what I'm looking for. So I, I look for the technical bias. You guys, you know, if you guys want to go back and rewind the live session. So from the beginning of the session, I was looking at the technical bias on the 10 minute, three minute, and one minute, right? In order for me to confirm that, I want to make sure that price is below the pivots and the trend meter is red. Trend meter is optional, but it's going to give you a better understanding as to like where price is going. So like right here, price is below the pivots, trend meter is red. Same here on the three, three minute, price is below the pivots, trend meter is red. And then same here on the 10 minute price is below the pivot and the trend meter is red. So with that said, we have a we have a you know technical bias here for a sell. Next up, we wanted to confirm the fundamental bias. We did that by looking at CNBC over here at the daily average. So right here it was negative, right? It was uh it was like negative 10 points or 12 points. It's not a strong bias, but the, the bias is still for a sell because it was in the red. So with that said, we had requirements one and two met. The third requirement was to trade opposite of retail sentiment. Um, looking over here at retail sentiment, it was short, so that didn't fit the requirements. But like I mentioned, that's optional. If you want to be super sure, then obviously you know you want to trade opposite. But if not, it's not going to be a requirement. It's just an optional uh, requirement here. Uh, lastly, you want to confirm the recent K2 momentum signal in the direction of entry. So we're looking for a sell here because our bias is for a sell. And right here we have a sell signal, right? So with that said. We got requirements one through format. Lastly, you just want to confirm uh, a strong candle in the direction of the entry. So right here, you want to make sure that there's little to no wick. Right here was a small wick. And the reason I knew that was because this candle right here was bigger than the wick, right? If you measure the candle right here, this candle was about 12 or 13 pips. Looking at the wick down here, the wick was only about five or six pips. So it's like less than half the size of the candle. So with that said, I would consider this a strong candle and what you know with all those requirements met you can enter on the open of the falling candle fixed tp stop loss for 500 pips and that's why we mark this up right here we let that run obviously you get some retracement here comes back down and then it drops all the way to full tp and that's how the breakout strategy works um you know it's a little complicated if you guys don't know what to look out for but if you guys watch every live session for the past you know two three years i look at the same exact thing every morning and this trade almost always hits. Like right here, it was a risky trade, but it still hit, right? Because we knew exactly where price is gonna go because we had our requirements here. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the breakout strategy. Let's put this back over here. I'll just hide this for future use. Um, but it's uh, 7.19 right now. So the news is coming up in about, in about um, 10 minutes. So I'm not gonna take any more trades from here. If you guys have questions, I'll answer more questions. Let me see if there's anything else in the Zoom as we uh, continue on here. All right, Joel's asking how to trade monthly open. I don't trade monthly open, Joe, so I can't really answer that question for you. Uh, Jameson's asking, is there a difference between pips and ticks on trading view when setting up a long and short position? Yeah, pips and ticks are totally different, Jameson. Ticks are points. Pips stand for points and percentage. So, you know, if you, if you have a point in percentage, you're going to have 100 pips within 10 points, right, or 10 ticks. Ticks and points are the same thing. So for example, right here, if you're setting this up, see how there's ticks right here? These are 50 uh, ticks or points, whatever you want to call it. Uh, these aren't pips. So if you're looking at pips, pips are points in percentage. So they're basically ticks in percentage. And if you're going to do that, you have to do it by the hundredth. So if you want to add pip, if you want to count this as pips, you just got to add a zero to it. That's going to make it pips. These are points, ticks, add a zero to that. It's going to be pips, uh, so pips versus points and ticks. That's the main difference there. Um, but it also depends on which broker you're using. So if you're using currency.com, what we use, then it's gonna be measured in ticks or points. If you're using something like Awanda over here, this is totally different. This is gonna be in, in pips. So like, just check this out. See how this right here, I'm just gonna measure a candle for you. So see this big red candle right here, if I measure this for you, this is gonna be 173 pips, right? Because every broker is different. Oanda is a Forex broker. It's not a futures broker. It's not an indices broker. It's a Forex broker. So with that said, this is 173 pips, right? I'm going to go over here to currency.com. Look at that same red candle. I'm going to measure right here. It's 17 points or ticks, right? So you just add a zero to it. That's 170 pips. So right here, 17 ticks points. 
a wand over here, 170 pips, right? So that's the difference right there. A lot of people get confused, but it's not really that difficult. You just add a zero to it. Um, and then I'll turn it into points because a lot of people don't even understand what pips means, right? Pips are points in percentage. So, you know, basic logic is going to tell you that, um, you know, if you're looking at points in percentage, then how much percentage is in one point? It's 100%, right? So if you're doing, uh, you just add a zero to it, and it's going to change the, uh, the difference there. So just a quick little lesson for you guys there, for you guys who didn't know. And it's fine if you guys didn't know. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, everyone thinks that PIP is an actual word. PIP is just an acronym for points in percentage. And if you guys took the, the basic, you know, the, the beginner course here for, uh, for K2, I explained in there. So if you guys don't have access to if you guys are brand new here and you guys haven't had access to K2 at all, if you guys want to learn about all these terms and all the basics, just click here to unlock your free access and you'll get access to the basic, you know, intro course. Um, if you guys want access to the indicators so that you guys can apply these strategies on your own, just like everyone else here, like if you want to lock into massive profits, like, like Fawn over here, you know, like hundred K, uh, just go on the website click on K2 strategies and you'll get access to all the K2 strategies that everyone's applying here. If you just want access to the Zoom room, because I know some of you guys are here on the YouTube, if you just want access to um, to the Zoom so that you can have uh, these live sessions real time, because the YouTube is delayed. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed that, but it's delayed like 15 to 30 seconds. So if you're taking scalps with us, that can be the difference between winning a trade and losing a trade. And if you guys want access to the live Zoom, just click on K2 trades live trading right here. And that's how you'll get access to the uh, the Zoom. Just FYI for whoever here is new. Um, yeah, no problem, Jameson. All right, let me see if there's anything else that I'm missing over here. So a couple more profits here. Let's see, uh, Kyle over here locked in a total of 500 for the day. Great work, Kyle. Uh, looking over here at uh, Neely. So he locked in a total of 4,213. Great work, bro. On point with that. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. That's a pretty nice profit. 4,213 for the day, no losses. Looking over here at Patricia, Patricia locked in a total of 1,521. <laughs> yeah, Patricia said done for the day, tough trading day today. Yeah, it's uh, today's was meant to be tough, guys, because there's a lot of news this morning. So it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's a given that that, that was going to happen today. So other than that, let me see if there's anything else that I'm missing here. I'm going to scroll down real quick. Yeah, exactly, CJ. Uh, because the thing is, if we're taking a one minute scalp here, we're in this position for like a few seconds, if not a few minutes, right? And if you guys miss the, the exit, um, you guys would get caught up on like, you, you guys would get caught in the trade here. That's why the people in the Zoom here have like all these massive profits because they're catching trades immediately whenever I take them. So Dell over here locked in a total of 441. Great work, Dell. All right, let me scroll down and see what else I'm missing over here. <laughs> Abraham said, I caught it by mistake, sweaty fingers. Exactly. And Maddie said, uh, market took forever. Market is wild today. No, exactly. I agree, bro. Market is just is just way too slow. So there's an entry here off the three minutes. Sorry, guys. I totally missed this trade here. I'm not going to take it because the news is coming up right now. But Rab did catch this three-minute trade right here. I don't recommend you guys enter it. But if you guys are in it already, um, I'll just mark it up for you guys here. For whoever's in the position, because some of you guys did catch this when it came up. Looks like Rav might might have caught it. But I'm not taking it because the news is coming up you know, within five minutes. I don't want to be caught in this position and the news comes out as positive and then it spikes in the opposite direction. So just an FYI, the, the trade is available here, but I'm not going to take it. There's a couple of reasons why I don't want to take it because we do have the New York low right here as well. So it might just bounce off this. If it comes down, it might just bounce off the New York low before it hits TP. So something to be careful about. Uh, but the main thing that I'd be careful about here is the uh, news event that's coming up in about five minutes. We have um, the crude oil inventory is coming up right here. And it's supposed to be positive. So if it's positive, it might push price to the upside. So I don't recommend you guys take it. If you guys want to take it, feel free. But, you know, take it at your own risk and understand that, uh, you know, the risk that's involved with that trade right there. All right. Other than that, let me see if there's anything else that I'm missing. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. So it looks like a lot of, some of you guys did catch the three minute there. So if you guys caught it for a discount, I mean, that'd be cool. But for the most part, I'm not going to take it because we do have the news coming up here. And if the news does come up positive, you're probably going to expect some sort of spike to the upside. Uh, also, we do have Fed member Bossy speaking at nine o'clock. So it looks like a lot of people are probably going to be pulling out of the market shortly. Let me check the market sentiment over here. So retail sentiments looking at 58% short, which is actually good for a lot of you guys here who are... Uh, a lot of you guys here who are um, looking to 
looking to uh, hop into that cell there. But I mean, we'll see what happens in a bit. Let me just check this real quick. All right, looks good for the most part. All right, Mark, uh, news is coming up in about three minutes. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, to uh, to go ahead and pop your questions in the chat. Otherwise, I'll probably be logging off soon because I'm not going to trade from like now until eight because there's a uh, the Fed member boss going to be speaking at nine. There's just a lot of stuff going on in the market, guys. And, it, and for the most part, uh, it, if you guys did make profit today, it's probably best to just go away with your profit and then come back tomorrow when uh, when we come back. So let me see if there's any other news tomorrow. I think there is a lot of news tomorrow too. So Thursday. Actually, there's not that much news. We have unemployment claims at uh, 530. That's going to affect the market for sure. But other than that, we have uh, the Fed speaking at 10. So we'll probably be okay with the breakouts. Um, and volatility is probably going to pick up because we're getting closer to NFP. So the uh, market will be a bit busier tomorrow. Um, and then it's probably going to slow down around 10, 12 once the Fed starts speaking. But tomorrow is also going to be risky because the Fed's speaking all morning. Other than that, let's see what happens when the news comes out. Um, I just want to see how, how price moves with regard to uh, the news event. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and put your questions in the chat. I can answer whatever questions you guys have, um, but I'm not in any positions. I only have, uh, I only took two trades today, both wins. So for this whole week, guys, I'm pretty much have no losses. So here's my trades for today. I'm just going to add this up so that you guys can see where I'm at this morning or for this week. I would send you guys my MT4, but you know, the MT4 is kind of skewed because it shows profits from last week. And we haven't had any losses for a for a long time over here. So let me see this real quick. Uh, let's see, eight seventy nine, twenty three times two. So this is my profit from this morning. Let me show you guys my profits from yesterday. Yesterday, I locked in this. I made one thousand six hundred ninety. Ah, fuck! What happened to my thing? All right, so one thousand six hundred ninety. Plus my props from earlier at 1758.46. Plus this one over here was 1590. So I'm up about 5038 for this week so far. And then this right here, another 30 bucks for my personal account. And then from Monday, today's Wednesday. So no losses at all this entire week. So from uh, Monday, I made 2,308. 30820 cents plus uh, my other account right here, 2008 two cents. cents. Um, and then my personal account over here for about 50 bucks. All right, so th this is where my profits are sitting for for the week so far. I haven't had any losses this week. This is from Monday, August 30th. You know, all my trades here are fully transparent. I take the trades live. Analyze them live, show you guys my profits after we take the trade. So for right here, this is all I locked in on Monday, um, yesterday. This is what I locked in from yesterday. And then this morning, this is all that I locked in from this morning. So as you guys can see, if you guys can control your wins and minimize as many losses as possible, you know, you could add up your profits pretty nicely. Uh, it's not that difficult. It, it's, it's, you know, it's all about risk management. So if you guys can handle your positions properly, don't take risky positions. Like for this morning, I mentioned that I wasn't going to take very many positions because, or any positions at all, because of the heavy news, right? If you guys stick to the plan and don't, you know, don't take trades that you're not supposed to take, um, you guys can do completely fine. But it's all going to have to, you know, it's all going to start with you guys. You, if you guys are, wow, look at the news right here. This thing was like way different. So it was negative three. They were anticipating it to be negative 2.5. It's actually negative 7.2 mil. So they actually sold a lot of crude oil inventories uh, over the past month or so. And that's actually going to, it looks like it's going to push price up. That's exactly what's happening right here, right? We already anticipated price to be positive, uh, the news to be positive. It was actually a lot more positive than people anticipated. So really, really, uh, you know, this is why you guys got to be careful with these trades. And you guys have to make sure that you don't take trades around news. Because if you're holding a trade in the opposite direction, you know, based off the news, you can easily get screwed. And it just might go the opposite way. So I think that's it for now, guys. Let me see if there's anything else. Um, let me see if there's anything that I'm missing over here. 
uh, CJ is asking, uh, where do I go to see the Zoom link again, bro? So when you go on the website over here, k2trades.com, just click on K2 Trades Live Trading Room. If you just want access to the Zoom link, if you want access to the strategies, you click on K2 Strategies right here. But if you want access to just the Zoom, uh, click on this right here, uh, CJ. So other than that, let me see if I'm missing anything. So Scott over here said, when you exit your trade on MT4 manually, are you watching US 30 price or you know that, or you know that your 10 lot or 10 100 pips is a thousand? You, you exist with button push when you see, uh, no, <laughs> I don't go off the profit, Scott. I go off the actual move because your profit's not always going to be exactly the same. Uh, I think that might be where you're, uh, where you might be messing up. So Scott, if the trade here hits TP, it doesn't matter where your profit's at. You need to exit the trade. So like using this for an example right here, because Scott's asking me if I wait for like the profit to show on my MT4, I never wait for profits, bro. That's how you get greedy. And that's how you, uh, you, you start to, uh, lose trades. Cause I, I know what you're talking about. A lot of people like to look at the profits. I don't even, I, don't, I never look at profits. I only look at profits after I've already added the position. Uh, you guys should never look at the monetary value of your position, because if you do, you're going to get screwed because that's how you get greedy. So looking at this right here, when price comes down and hits my TP, I'm out of the position. I don't care if I made a thousand. I don't care if I made 2000 or if I made less than that. Uh, when it hits TP, I'm out of the position. So Scott, that's one thing to keep in mind. I know a lot of people like to wait for the profit to hit a certain number. They have like a round number, right? They enter the position. They're like, oh, I want to make 500 bucks off this trade, but it's already past TP. And they're still holding on to it. If you do that, you're going to get caught in some drawdown, like something like this. And then you're going to get me mad at yourself because you didn't just exit when you were supposed to. So, um, yeah, for me personally, Scott, I, you know, I personally just pull, I pull out of the position when it hits profit, I'm out, even though it came back down again. Um, as soon as it hits my profit target, I'm ready out of position. Never go off uh, monetary value because you're going to get burnt that way. All right, guys. So other than that, I think that, uh, let me see. So Scott, Scott said, got you. So you see the candle on TV, on trading view, hit TP, then you exit on MT4. Yeah. Um, or you set a TP, you can do that as well. You can either set a TP or you can um, exit manually like I do. I mean, it's really up to you. If, you. if you're having issues exiting at proper timing, then you should probably just put a TP. Um, otherwise, if, if you're okay with exiting manually, and, and it all comes with, this, with the person, right? So everyone trades differently. Some people, like, they just don't have the trade psychology to exit at the perfect time. Uh, a lot of them just like to hold on even longer. So depending on your trade psychology, if you can exit at the right time, then do it manually. If not, then I would recommend just putting a TP so that you can pull out of the position. Yeah, no problem, Scott. Got, glad I could help you with that. And that's a common issue. So don't think that that's like a one, a one issue that's just with you. Uh, a lot of people have that same exact issue. It, it happens with a lot of new traders, including myself when I first started trading. So other than that, guys, I think that's it for this session. It's 734 right now. Um, but I think I'm done trading for the day because we do have uh, the Fed speaking in about a couple hours. So you're probably going to see the market starts to move a little funky around eight o'clock from eight o'clock to nine o'clock. You'll start to see people like volatility die down because people are going to pull out. And then around nine, you're probably going to see market starts to move kind of funky. It's going to go back and forth because whatever the Fed says will affect the market directly, especially U.S. 30 because it's dealing with the U.S. economy. So something uh, something to keep in mind. If you guys don't have to trade, just call it a day. Otherwise, um, you know, I'll catch you guys back here tomorrow for the next live session. Let me see if there's any other profits that I need to go over over here. Uh, that looks good. I don't see anything else here. All right. So like all, I went over all the profits today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put, put the, uh, the, um, the, the profit post later. So if you guys have profits to send in, go ahead and send them over to me and I'll add them to the list. But just looking at this right here, here's the timestamp for today. You guys can see it says today right here. Uh, these are all the profits locked in by all of the K2 members, uh, today. So like from right here, CC locked in about 1,300, his other account locked in 1,400. Larkin locked in about 5,900, Kip locked in about 6,700, Jamie locked in about 351, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to post all these up later. So if you guys have profits to send in, just send them over to me and I'll add them to the list. So other than that, guys, I'll catch you guys back here tomorrow uh, for the next live session. And we'll try to push through this week as we get closer to NFP. So have a great rest of your morning, guys. And if you guys don't have to trade, I recommend you guys don't. And 